Science Olympiad is a team competition in which students compete in 23 events pertaining to various scientific disciplines, including earth science, biology, chemistry, physics, and engineering. Almost 8,000 middle school and high school teams from 50 U.S. states compete each year. I'll be sure to put a link below to their main website. I was lucky enough to have been heavily involved in the program as my daughter competed at both the middle school and high school level. Now that she is graduating and moving on to studying engineering in college, in no small part due to the inspiration Science Olympiad has given her, this channel is my way of giving back to the community as a whole. My goal is to help pass along some of the knowledge I have learned over the years, specifically coaching the structural engineering event. This event is very challenging to compete at the highest levels. Having seen literally hundreds of teams compete at various competitions over the past six years, I know I can help many teams take the next steps to be more competitive. I will share my journey from knowing almost nothing about this event to having the students I coached being able to build nationally competitive devices. While the rules change every year, the basic fundamentals of this event are the same. At the core, this event is about building the most structurally efficient device. In other words, to hold the most weight divided by its mass. Every two years, the device type changes. Most recently, this change has gone from bridges to towers to boom levers to elevated bridges. Typically, the first year of a given device type has the most straightforward rules, allowing for a simpler device. The second year usually adds design constraints or scoring bonuses, which make things much more difficult. Usually, the only difference between Division B, middle school, and Division C, high school, involves changing one primary dimension. For example, Division C bridge might have to span 45 centimeters instead of 35, or the Division C tower might have to be 60 centimeters tall instead of 50. Most of the event rules are bound by the testing apparatus and process and don't change from year to year. There will always be a 5 by 5 by 2 centimeter loading block that connects to a chain which holds a bucket in which sand can be added. You might test with a very nice auto loading system like this one, or you can easily build a device that can hand load sand with a simple tabletop design. Typically, hand loading is more challenging and will result in slightly lower scores overall, but some teams and state competitions prefer to use that. You'll need to be ready to compete with either type. Another event parameter that never changes is the maximum loading mass, which is 15 kilograms. Rules can change, which give bonus weight for achieving certain things, but the maximum mass the device will ever have to hold is 15 kilograms. Here's an example of a boom lever set up and ready to test on an autoloader machine. You can see the bucket is hanging from the loading block and currently several inches above the floor. The sand is in the green hopper ready to be poured into the bucket with the lever with the red knob on the right. Here you can see an example of the autoloader pouring the sand in the bucket, currently on the floor for this demonstration. The user can control the flow rate of the sand with the lever. If the device breaks during testing, it's important to stop the loading process so no extra sand gets in the bucket. Here is an example of a simple loading table which can be used with hand loading. It's also fairly easy to build a custom boomy lever testing setup, but you need to make sure it's secure to the table and the table is secure to the floor. My plan with this channel is to create a series of journey videos which document at a high level the various seasons we've had. This will cover bridges, towers, and boomy levers. I will show our general design progression with some tricks and tips along the way. After that, I plan on going into much more detail on exactly how we achieved what we did and how you might be able to emulate our successes. I also plan on utilizing a high-speed camera that can hopefully show in great detail why certain things are necessary for success. Regardless if you're a student, a coach, or just someone interested in cool balsa engineering, please like this video and subscribe to my channel for more content in the future.